Staying centered with your service rifle. Today we're going to be discussing thoughts on sight alignment, sight picture, otherwise known as holds, and focus. Sight alignment. Sight alignment is the alignment of the front sight in the rear sight aperture. Here we have our aperture. Here we have our front sight. These crosshairs represent the middle of the rear sight aperture. We line the front sight up in the middle of the rear sight aperture, center, center. Next, we're going to be discussing sight picture, which is bringing the aligned sights onto the target. Here we have our sights. Here we have our target. We bring our aligned sights onto the target, center, center, center. Next, we're going to be discussing holds, which is the relationship of sight alignment to sight picture. Here is an example of what is known as center mass. The front sight and rear sight lined up evenly with the target right behind it. Center, center, center. Next is six o'clock hold. Front sight and rear sight lined up perfectly with the target right above it, otherwise known as pumpkin on a post or a lollipop. This is an example of what is known as a flat tire. It looks like a tire with air out of it. Next is a reverse flat tire. Given good light conditions, this can be a good hold for prone. As you can see here, you have limited elevation exposure. Taking a look at the target, if only this much is showing above your front sight post, well, this is roughly the elevation of the X-ring. Up next is the line of white, almost like a six o'clock hold, but with a little bit more white showing behind it. This is what is known as a frame hold, typically only used in extremely bad light conditions or foggy conditions. It puts the bottom of the target frame flush at the bottom of the front sight post. This hold can also be useful if you run out of elevation adjustment in your rear sight for say reaching out past 600 yards to 800, 900 or 1000 yards. Up next, we'll be discussing eye focus. An eye cannot focus on more than one thing at a time. In rifle shooting, we have three things to deal with. The aperture, or rear sight, the front sight, and the target. Almost impossible to do, focusing on the rear sight aperture leaves the front sight fuzzy and the target fuzzy. Focusing on the front sight makes the rear sight ghost out and it makes the target blurry. Focusing on the targets makes all of the sights blurry. Well, which one? What are we supposed to focus on? The answer is the front sight. More specifically, the tip of the front sight, as hard as possible all of the time. Up next is combining sight picture and focus. More specifically, how hard we focus on our front sight, determining how inside or outside of our call our shots appear. This is a good sight picture. Front sight crisp and clear, target behind it. By shifting your focus onto the target, a shot taken here, well, it's going to net a poor result, well outside of our call. Good crisp sight picture. Next is eye fatigue, which is not really focusing on anything. A shot taken like this, well, it's still gonna net something out of call, not what we want. Focus on the front sight as hard as possible. Front sight. Even if that sight moves, which is what's known as our wobble, a shot taken here, still going to be inside of our call. Good points. Now let's discuss focus and holds and how sometimes alternative holds can be a bit misleading. For example, six o'clock hold. This is an example of a good six o'clock hold. The front sight lined up evenly in the rear sight aperture with the target right above it, six o'clock. Well, the edges of the target become diffused when you focus on the front sight post and you can creep up into them. It's easy to bleed into this. A shot taken here, well, it's gonna net a poor result. It's points lost out to elevation. Let's try another example. Six o'clock hold, well, you take a closer look, they actually put the target in the middle with the front sight post underneath it. A shot taken like this, 
Very poor result. Even more points lost out to elevation. Like I said, some of these holes can be really, really misleading. Take a look at this. Looks good, right? Except for we kind of put everything in the middle. Well, a shot taken like this, who knows where that's going to go. Up next, we'll be discussing center mass hold. It's natural. Everything is in the middle. Center, center, center. Things like light conditions, where it's maybe really bright outside and it makes your target appear really small. Well, guess what? It's still center, center, center. Center mass hold, a good standby to always have with you on your way to the high power range. Center mass hold. Thanks for watching this video. Good luck to you and your high power shooting journeys.